See, that's how you you flip the narrative. You don't allow them to box you into a dumb position that you don't actually believe in that's not resonant with your spirit. you got to always flip the narrative. That's what we do on this show. We flip it. It's called social Aikido. But the biggest problem we have to deal with, in some sense, is the media and how media shapes our senses, how it shapes our way of processing the world. Someone who's very helpful for understanding some of that is a, a, a thinker that was popular. He was a big star back in the 60s and so forth, but then he kind of faded into obscurity in our time. But he's someone that we need to pay attention to and look at his work, and that is Marshall McLuhan. So joining me to talk about that is a fellow fan and student of Marshall McLuhan. We have James Cortides with us. How you doing, James? I'm doing well. God bless, David. Keep up the uh, the good work, man. You're part of the solution, uh, and I appreciate your work very much. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks. And yes, I also want people to check out your YouTube channel, which I see is growing, doing very well, and you're putting a lot of great content out too. So that's why I wanted to have you on, to give your perspective, because obviously right now, the big thing that we're learning from this election and the fallout, whatever's going to come of the actual candidates, is this media war, you know, this control of information and this bifurcation of reality where you can't even make sense with your neighbor anymore because they live in a cocoon of corporate manipulated media that's shaping their feelings, shaping their gut, shaping their health, their mental health, and actually spilling off into real violence for no reason whatsoever. So maybe you could give us some insights as someone who studies Marshall McLuhan about what's happening in this time, this digital age, where we have these TV style gatekeepers like TV media, print media, and Facebook and Twitter. They're kind of like TV too. And they're wrestling to have total control. And they want people to believe that their candidate officially won and there's nothing to see. And they don't want you to look at Hunter Biden's emails. They don't want you to do anything that goes against their interests. And it's so hard for us to unplug certain minds uh, out of that matrix. So just speak to that for a moment from your perspective. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Marshall McLuhan is, uh, did go into obscurity. Um, you know, he's from Toronto, that area there. And I was there a couple of years ago and I was asking, you know, a family up there um, about Marshall McLuhan and they didn't know who he was. I'm like, that's one of the most foremost Canadian philosophers coming out of there, but his time is coming now. He's very prescient and kind of prophetic in the work that he was doing. He's well known for his, his uh, kind of quip of the medium is the message. Um, and that is that it's not the uh, individual content or the program that is what's impactful, is the way that media restructures our relationships with the world and with each other. And, and that has been the case, you know, through the broadcast television media where we had a handful of channels that was providing the collective narrative for the people to kind of cohere on it and, and kind of share together. That has uh, all but broken down. And I think the podcast that you have called um, Things Hidden is perfect. And Marshall McLuhan talks about uh, apocaly apocalyptic thinking a lot. Apocalypse means uh, revealing or uncovering. And what we're seeing here is a revealing and an uncovering of the way the media has always worked. And it's been amplified recently. And it's becoming more obvious to more and more people. Uh, and I think this is a, a big shot across the bow, what they've done uh, with calling the Biden presidency and the, the shenanigans that happened after the vote ballots were cast Tuesday night. We all went to bed and then we woke up and there was a different outcome. Uh, and, and to even question these outcomes, uh, you know, it, you're ridiculed. And they're using, uh, you know, sentences, you know, Rus Russell conjugations like, there's no evidence. And people just repeat that. There's no evidence. Well, you are not providing us information about objective reality. You are programming and manipulating and propagandizing us to cohere with an outcome that the corporate interests uh, would like. And that's the big message from Marshall McLuhan. He um, talks about the reverse. You're talking about the flip. He talks about re re flipping the, the cause and the effect. The effects that we see really disclose the causes, right? So the effects of manipulation, uh, you know, and control, these aren't the effects, these are the causes. That's, these are the reason these corporations have these media structures in place. Th this is being revealed. There's no going back. There's no going back to the way it was. The question is, is what's going to come out of it? What are the new media platforms? What is our coherent 
you know, collective sense making going to look like uh, in the future? And I think that's the question that, you know, is emerging and you're answering and I'm trying to answer uh, at myself as well. Yeah, it's a very interesting time. So for folks who are kind of new to this idea of looking at media as the sh as the cause of of what's happening and the way we're we're turning into a culture of of meaninglessness and inability to communicate people would say well wouldn't the digital age make people more independent thinking why does it seem like we're in this digital age we've had the internet for some time now and it seems like people are becoming more willfully ignorant every year you know so so what's your take on that for folks you know they say you know if if we had tv media we had four channels or three channels in radio and then we had this explosion of blogs and websites and obscure ideas pop out in the wild west of the internet and then of course the internet gets sucker punched by facebook twitter and google pretending to be you know independent message board sites and then they fraudulently turn on their customers once they became monopolies and said, actually, we were never going to be a message board. We just said we would so that we would become monopolies. And then we're going to pull the rug out from you and, and actually become a PR firm for giant banks and pharmaceuticals and war and so forth. So how do people, you know, engage in this time? And is the digital age actually freeing minds at a rapid pace or are the forces of regression represented by Silicon Valley uh, monopolies, are they actually winning here? Yeah, I think you're seeing both happen. Uh, I think when uh, a lot of this disclosure of the corruption of the media is coming to light, a lot of people kind of retreat back into um, kind of what they feel is safe. So that's their the narrative that they've kind of held on to. And you're seeing uh, a really this dramatically happen within communities, within neighborhoods. I see it in my own neighborhood happen. And, you know, we had a collective group of friends on our streets that have been bifurcated. And, um, you know, and you're seeing situations like I had a neighbor who um, was asking another neighbor about what is a good dentist in the area. And my neighbor suggested this dentist. And the, the neighbor said, oh, I looked them up. They're Republicans. We can't go to them. They're Republicans. And I said, oh, my goodness, this is, you know, it's, a, it's not a big gap to say, you know, I'm not going to them. They're Jewish. What's the difference? You don't really choose your belief systems. And this is a good person that is making this distinction and is having this, this, these thoughts. These aren't bad people, but people are retreating and they're retreating into their narratives. I think it's uh, important to kind of keep a calm head and try to steel man the argument that you disagree with. Right. Straw manning is taking the worst argument from the other side and attacking that, uh, the best thing you can do is try to find different media channels, different perspectives, specifically on your Facebook feed, right? Because they are going to echo whatever they think you're interested in. So you should be um, choosing Mother Jones and choosing Breitbart and different various uh, media communications, and then not becoming emotionally hijacked. If you become emotionally hijacked and you react, you're automatically in a narrative. That is a good way to, to figure out if you've been caught, right? And then you got to just cool the waters You've taken the information um, and you have conversations and you ask questions and you don't use the inflammatory, sensational, um, you know, words and statements and feelings that we're made to do. Um, there are the best thing to do is, is develop a network of trustworthy, coherent information sources from YouTube, you know, from, you know, the, the legacy media, radio, read books. You know, th these aren't new. You know, corruption is not new. Right? The corruption of the human heart is not new, and the overcoming of this, this corruption comes within you. Right? Truth does not change. Truth is inside all of us, right? So focusing, um, and this is what started my media channel or my, my YouTube channel, it was COVID-19. COVID-19 is acting like a sort of selective pressure that is forcing innovation, that is forcing evolution. And it forced me to share this material that had such a profound impact on me, the church fathers, um, you know, Marshall McClure, Nay Girard. Uh, a lot of these different thinkers and writers, read them, listen to them, experience them, and, and things will become clearer to you. And when things become clear, relationships become better in your life, right? And that will have a ripple effect into your neighborhood and your community. Uh, so it's really about working uh, on your, your heart, praying, and, and, and doing those things. And, uh, you know, you will be able to kind of find the truth within you and share that. We're speaking with James Cortides talking about the media's effect on the human mind and our feelings, our uh, 
sense making and we'll continue in just a moment. I'm going to ask James how we should deal with folks who are caught up in this crowd, this spirit of the crowd that's fashionable in our time. That's all about, you know, burning effigies of Trump, even when they're happy because they think they won. I mean, it's like if you're burning effigies in the street when you're having your happy day, that's not a good place to be mentally. I want to ask James, as someone who studies holistic medicine and Eastern approaches to medicine and tries to integrate them into the West, I want to ask James what he thinks of that. What's going on in the mind of people who want to burn effigies and scream and cuss when they're happy because they think they won? What's going on? We'll be back in just a moment. Our Neighbor's Choice is back. I'm here with James Cortides, and we're talking about this situation we find ourselves where people literally believe they're helping vulnerable people by hiring a man like Joe Biden, who spent 50 years of his life at the highest seat of power, oppressing people, taking away their jobs through regulations, corporate welfare, bailouts for the rich and the bankers scraps for the rest of us, destroying our jobs because of probably whatever was on those emails and many, many more that he has to be beholden to other countries. So he makes rig deals that take advantage of our people because he sells out for a bucket of crab legs or something. And uh, so James, I want to ask you, why is it that so many of these people feel self-righteous and yet they feel this jubilant joy, but they still need to burn something? We know that this is coming back to rituals from pagan times where they needed to scapegoat someone. They needed to burn someone, usually a live victim, and the crowd would vent their anger and they would really believe that that victim deserved it, whether that was a victim they believed was guilty of some taboo or it was a victim who was selected in a ceremonial, a ceremonial sacrifice as a way of commemorating that raw, spontaneous uh, attack in the streets by a mob. Why do they need to burn a symbol that looks like Donald Trump, even when they're happy? What's going on in the kind of mind space for people who are tempted to feel this way? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and I think the uh, important thing to remember and going back to McLuhan is, is the medium is the message, right? And when we see these, these videos of, the, of burning Donald Trump in effigy, this is a small percentage of the populace. We're talking about in the, the low teens in terms of percentage wise. And we see it come through through the media and it's sensationalized, it's amplified. And we think and we project that onto other people, our neighbors, our friends, our family members, right? And the same thing happens from the other side, from the right's perspective, right? The, the right feels that the left is gonna usher in communism, that the left is going to take away guns, the let you know, and the you know, there, there's this happening on both sides. We got to remember, and there's something that I would point your uh, listeners to. There's something called the Hidden Tribes Report, uh, the Hidden Tribes of America. Check it out on Google. I've been sending this to my friends and my family members, and it's a sparking discussion about commonalities and things that we have in common because we have more in common than we have um, in uncommon, right? It talks about here that 80% of, of the American population really wants the same thing. And you have another 10% 10, 10 that is politically engaged and kind of hyper-partisan. And then you got that smaller percentage that's amplified by the media to keep us think we're divided against each other. It shows this insanity happening on the streets, uh, which is real, but it's not the majority. So having discussions about what's important, family, um, you know, education, and, and about the core beliefs of what America is. And you'll see that these will resonate and don't focus on topics that are sensationalized and made to inflame relationships. Love the people that are, uh, that are having different beliefs than you. Love them and then engage them in a calm manner, right? Because we have more in common than we have, um, than we have disagreements in. And again, I would go to that Hidden Tribes report. It's really wonderful and it sparks great discussions and that's what we need. If we can't talk to each other, right, the discussions and conversations are what keeps violence from escalating. Most of us can talk to each other. This has diminished lately, but again, the medium is the message. The media wants us divided against each other. And this isn't some broad conspiracy of the media, right? It's, it's just the effects that we're seeing that disclose the causes. Have conversations, don't blame don't point figure, fingers and just, uh, you know, come with an open heart and love in your heart and share that. 
that's really all we can do right now as we're in this very uncertain uh, moment in life, right? And, and uncertainty is the key. And something that's really stood out to me is all of these major issues, whether it's COVID or masks, of who won the election, of whether Trump is a Russian puppet, there is no resolution. There's always this veil of uncertainty over every issue that, that uh, bifurcates into two narratives. And those two narratives are soaked up by the populace through the media. And then there's no discussion because both sides think they're 100 percent right. Right. So we got to get out of this this uh, being channeled into these uh, either or left and right dichotomies. Um, and it's happening. It's, it's not being shown to us on the on the mainstream media, but it is happening between people, between networks of people. Join those networks. Come in with an open heart and uh, we'll get through this. We've gotten through worse and we'll get through this. Well, James, you said a very great, uh, poignant message there, and I think it's a message we need to think about more. And uh, I, I just think that there's a there needs to be a talking to on the left because we didn't see the right burn down cities because they they got this media saying Biden won, and and the right has a lot of uh, bad policies that they support, the bad ideas, but they haven't normalized beating up people in the streets and burning cities like a, a movie from Joker, the Batman movie. And I think we have to be able to talk to the left and say, hey, you got to stop this stuff. I think it comes from a fundamentalist devotion for the state that is more hardcore on the left, where they really, truly believe that the state is benevolent. And when they tell them, we trust the science, it's just a fact. And when they tell them, it's okay, we're going to go to Syria. It'll be totally different from Iraq. They just believe it like a fact. And there has to be more skepticism. I appreciate your time, James. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. God bless. You too. We'll be back in just a moment with more. Stay with us.